If you've done any front-end web development, then you've probably seen the head tag at the top of an HTML document before. Well, what do all the tags in here actually do, and do you need any of them? Well, in today's video, we're going to be going through all of the HTML tags that can be used inside the head of your web page. I'll show you why you might want to add them, and I'll show you how they work. The first tag, right at the top of your HTML page, is the title tag. The title tag looks like this, and it lets you add some text in there that acts as a title for your web page when it's displayed in a browser. So here, if I open up a web page in Chrome, you can see that the title tab in the bar at the top, that's coming from the title tag in the HTML. This is important for both user experience and for search engine optimization. Each HTML document should have one title tag placed within the header section. You can only have one title tag, that's actually part of the HTML spec, and so make sure you have it and make sure you only have it once. Next up, we've got the style tag. The style tag is used to include CSS styling directly in the HTML document. It's what's called inline styling or inline CSS. So you can add the style tag in there and then anything inside the open tag and the closing tag will be raw CSS. And that will apply to any matching element on the page. Now you probably don't see the inline style tag used very often. That's because while this can be used to style elements, it's best practice to actually keep styles separate to the HTML to maintain cleaner code. Which brings us on to the next tag. The next tag is the link tag. The link tag is used to connect an external CSS file to the HTML document. So you add the link tag in like this and you supply the URL of the CSS file that you want to bring in. Now this can be an absolute URL or relative URL. This is generally considered better practice than using the style tag in line because it enables separation of content from presentation. So you'll see this tag quite a lot in HTML headers. Next, we've got the meta tag. Now, the meta tag provides metadata about your HTML document. And you'll typically have multiple occurrences of this meta tag. This data doesn't visually display anything on the page, but it can be useful for browsers and search engines to know more about your web page. Metadata is data about data, and it can include information about the document's character coding, a description of the page, keywords for search engine, or even like the author's name. Here's a few common meta tags that you might have come across in an HTML file before. The first one is the char set meta tag up here. This is used to specify the character encoding of the HTML document. Most commonly, the char set attribute is set to UTF-8, which includes the majority of the world's writing systems. It's unusual that you'll use a different character set, but you might, so it's worth knowing about how to change it if you ever need to. We've also got the viewport meta tag. This is a vital tool in responsive web design. This tag gives the browser instructions on how to handle the page's dimensions and how to handle the scaling. The preferred setup for this tag is to do width equals device width and initial scale equals one. So that tells the page to match the screen's width in device independent pixels and match the initial zoom level when the page is first loaded by the browser to be one. There's also the description meta tag. And the description tag allows you to set a brief summary of the page's content into the metadata. So historically, this was quite good for SEO, although these days search engines may choose to ignore this and to use their own description of your site based on the actual content of your page. This was abused a lot in the past by SEO professionals. So regardless, it's still good practice to specify a description in there, but um, it's not necessarily always used as a description of your page by search engines. Okay, lastly we've got the scripts tag. The script tag is used to include a reference to external JavaScript code within the HTML document. The placement of a script tag can influence the performance of the HTML web page, for example. If it's placed in the head tag without the async or defer attribute specified, then it will actually block the rendering of the web page until the script is loaded and executed. Web pages will typically have multiple script tags loaded in JavaScript files at various points in the page. So you can actually use this script tag in the body of the document itself, but general best practice these days is to add it into the head, but with an async or with a defer attribute. The script tag also lets you load in ES modules by setting the module attribute on the script tag. And that's a feature that modern frameworks like Vite take advantage of to speed up the development of your page. Lastly, we've got the base tag. Now the base tag specifies a base URL that all relative URLs on an HTML document will use. So the base tag must have either an href or a target attribute, um, or it can have both. There can be a maximum of one base element in a document, and so it must be inside the head element. 
If you set the base URL of your page to a different URL to the one you're on, then all relative links will be calculated using the value of that base URL in the base tag. So this can be really useful if your website's hosted on multiple domains, but you want to pull assets from a different domain. So that's all of the tags that you can add into the head of an HTML document. I do hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please subscribe to the channel and pop any questions you have in the comments section below. My name's James Charles and I'll see you in the next Train to Code YouTube video.